Hello, I'm Mark, and this is In the Round, Building Big Part 1, How to Make Paper Clay. Today we'll be visiting the ceramic studio where I build my large-scale sculptures, which look like this. Surprise, I'm not actually a traditional figure sculptor. I want to share my large-scale building process with you because, like figure sculpting, I think many of the techniques I use are quite broadly applicable. First up is the clay. When working at larger scales, it is hugely advantageous to use some form of paper clay by which I don't mean a paper-based air-dry clay, but rather paper added to a fireable ceramic clay. I'll quickly take you through how I make it, it's easy, and explain what's so good about it, and also a few of the things that are maybe not so good. The two big advantages of adding paper to your clay are, one, green strength. Paper provides significantly increased green strength. This is because the fibers bind the clay particles together so that they are far less prone to cracking under the stresses of joining, shaping, and drying. You can achieve similar strength with any added fiber. Some people like to use nylon, for instance, but then you miss out on the second, even bigger advantage of paper, moisture control. The paper fibers channel water through the clay, which means it's far easier both to dry out the clay for structural purposes and to wet it back down for sculptural ones. It also means that you can have clays of dramatically different dryness in close proximity without the clay cracking and can successfully join clays of very different moistures. The only real disadvantage of paper clay is that it's difficult to carve a cut, and also it molds like crazy, turning mottled black and stinky in as little as a week, which is unpleasant, but not otherwise a problem. For this batch, I'm using 50 pounds of water, 150 pounds of clay, 15 pounds medium grog, 15 pounds fine grog, and six pounds of paper. Measure your water. Paper clay requires more water than a typical clay to compensate for the absorbency of the paper in the 30 to 35 percent range. Add your paper. I use about 3 to 4% by dry weight, but the amount can vary a lot depending on your purposes and preferences, and precision is not overly important. It's best to use toilet paper because it's designed to dissolve in water. In this instance, I'm using three custodial sized rolls. Let it sit for a couple of minutes, then remove the cardboard tubes. Tear up the paper by hand, then blunge it until it forms a kind of gelatinous pulp. Add the paper pulp to your mixer. Sift in the dry ingredients. You can add paper to any clay, but if you're building big, it's also a good idea to have a fairly high grog content. I'm here using the studio's pre-mixed mid-fire stoneware with 30 pounds additional grog. After adding the first one quarter to one third dry material, scrape the mixer where its floor meets the sides to prevent material from getting compacted there. Mix until mixed. I usually give it a half hour or so. A Soldner mixer makes this process very easy, but if you don't have a mixer, you can still make the clay by hand. It's straightforward, but labor-intensive. You can make hand mixing a little easier by adding extra water, then letting the clay dry out to the desired consistency before wedging it. Here you can see the paper fibers in the clay. The paper will burn out when you fire it. Note that doing burnouts in electric kilns is generally not recommended, because the smoke can damage the elements. 